Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys the top 10 Linux distributions based on page hit ranking on distrowatch.com. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into it. Number 10, Zorin OS, an easy to use and stylish distribution based on top of Ubuntu and Debian. One of their goals is to provide an alternative to Windows that makes it easy to use Windows apps if you still want to, using tools like Play on Linux and Wine, but with more user security. They advertise specifically on their website that they don't track any of your private data, which is one thing that Windows has come under a lot of scrutiny for. And the desktop environment looks an awful lot like Windows 10, so for those of you who do like the look of Windows 10, you won't be disappointed. XFCE and GNOME are the supported desktop environments. Number 9, OpenSUSE. So one of the interesting things about OpenSUSE is that it comes in two different varieties these days. Tumbleweed, which is a rolling release distribution, basically that the core of the system can update with your regular software updates, and Leap, which is where you download a regular release and you stick to that until you choose to manually upgrade to a newer version. The difference compared to most Linux distributions is that you have the option of choosing how you want to update your system, rather than having to switch to a completely different operating system if you want that rolling release system, or if you actually don't want it. So the OpenSUSE group has a fully automated OS testing service called OpenQA, which is intended to find major bugs as soon as possible and to give users information about the quality of current OpenSUSE versions. And the supported desktop environments are quite a few, including Cinnamon, Enlightenment, GNOME, IceWM, KDE Plasma, LXDE, LXQT, Mate, and XFCE. Distribution number 8, Solus, a lightweight minimalist OS built for home computing. Its default desktop is Budgie, which is known for being able to switch to a GNOME lookalike view, but they also support GNOME and Mate desktops out of the box. Keeping in line with the home environment theme, they boast that they have good support for gaming with the ability to have external controllers, uh, media creation tools for art, music, and video, but they do also say that they have good support for developer tools and a variety of different programming languages. Number seven, Fedora. It's a distribution that I remember most for being a champion of the GNOME desktop. These days, they try to set themselves up as a very programmer-friendly distribution. They have three separate versions of Fedora you can download. The workstation variety, which is for your home computer. One variety for setting up standard Linux servers, and then a new one called Atomic, which is specialized for running Kubernetes or Origin clusters for containerized applications, kind of like the Amazon Web Services type of deal. Fedora users can use GNOME boxes as a alternative to Oracle VirtualBox for creating virtual machines, which can be used for things like software development or for testing Linux distributions. Most popular distribution number six, Debian. So Debian is a stable and long running distribution that many other modern distributions are built on top of. Aside from being known for stability, the Debian team also publishes large amounts of the source code publicly available for anyone to extend Debian from, probably one of the reasons why it's used as the basis for so many other operating systems. In addition to that, the email support team tries to answer emails within 15 minutes or less for free, which I would say sounds like some fantastic customer support. And Debian also supports almost every desktop environment under the sun. I'll flash those up on the screen real fast. There's a lot. Distribution number five, Ubuntu. Uh, another classically popular Linux distribution, perhaps best recognized by its colorful desktop and fun login sounds. Several other popular distributions base their systems off of Ubuntu, which bases it off of Debian. The main desktop environments are Unity and GNOME. Similar to Fedora, Ubuntu also has a server version, and Ubuntu is commonly used for creating Kubernetes clusters and cloud computing. There's even a mobile OS version of Ubuntu that can be run on some phones. Number four, Elementary OS. An Ubuntu-based distribution which has a custom desktop environment called Pantheon that comes with many of its own custom apps. Probably the most distinct part of Elementary OS is the look and feel of the operating system. It's clearly inspired from the Macintosh operating system, but it is definitely a Linux-based system and you can install it on any computer you want. 
Number three, Linux Mint, another classic when it comes to Linux distributions. And for a long time, I'm pretty sure Linux Mint was actually the most popular. It's always been known for being easy to install and use with great out of the box driver support. And Mint is a very easy place to start for users of Windows who are looking for a bit of a change. It's based on top of Ubuntu, but the desktops that you usually use out of the box with it look a lot closer to a standard Windows desktop. Officially supported desktops include Cinnamon, Mate, and XFCE. And although it's no longer at the top one spot, it's still a very popular distribution. So number two is MX Linux. It's based on the stable branch of Debian combined with some software from AntiX. It's designed to have a simple, efficient desktop with high stability and high performance. Currently, MX uses XFCE as its default desktop environment. Getting up and running with MX Linux should be easy since they boast having excellent hardware recognition for things like Wi-Fi, Broadcom, drivers, and external peripherals as well. MX Linux is also localized into many other languages as well. Getting started with things like gaming or video editing on MX Linux should be easy as well since they have a GUI NVIDIA driver installer to make that process simple for you. And the number one most popular Linux distribution as of early 2019 is Manjaro Linux. So Manjaro Linux has been my personal favorite for years and it actually managed to hit the number one spot. It's understandable why it was able to get there though as a fast and easy to use distribution that's built on top of Arch Linux. So on Manjaro, you have immediate access to great tools like the Arch User Repository, or AUR, and all of the user-made install scripts for pulling up applications like DaVinci Resolve on your system using simple YAWR commands. In my personal opinion, Manjaro Linux also has a great user interface and color scheme design. Over the years, Manjaro has added many desktop environments and now supports XFCE, KDE, i3, Cinnamon, Openbox, Awesome, Budgie, and Mate. So if this is going to be your first time picking out a Linux distribution to install, I do want to caveat this video with the information that most Linux distributions do perform pretty similar to each other. Regardless of which operating system you go with, you're going to have the same core terminal commands. The software that you can install on each system is the same, even if it's not necessarily in the package manager on the system, there should still be a way to install most of the apps you want to use. And that also applies to getting unique desktop environments to work on your system, which might not support it officially out of the box. But for this video, I hope you've enjoyed my top 10 most popular Linux distributions list in 2019. If you want more information about these distributions, I recommend you go over to distrowatch.com where you can see a lot of information, including links to the websites of each of these distributions and many more. But for this brief video, that's going to be it for me. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.